Hello everyone, this is Sholul Malik, your host of News Now Belmont Journal's Community Update. Hope is a thing with feathers. That's the latest exhibit, virtual exhibit being hosted by Belmont Gallery of the Arts. Inspired by a poem on birds written by Emily Dickinson, the exhibit is about range of human emotions and experiences. And today in our studio, we have Rebecca Richards and Adeen Storr, the co-presidents of Belmont Gallery of Arts. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So what can you tell us about uh, this uh, amazing exhibit? I had a chance to look at it and it's really beautiful. Um, so the exhibit is um, one of our ongoing exhibits that we initiated during the pandemic that have to do with um, the human connection, um, the resiliency of the human spirit. Adeen and I had discussed last summer when we made the decision to go virtual, what kind of exhibits we could produce and present to the community and allow artists to be a part of that would um, sort of reinforce our human connection when we were living during a, in a period of isolation. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought this would actually be um, another strong addition to the two shows that we had produced previously, which were Facing You, a portrait show and um, Art Heals, which was about um, the healing power of art. So this sort of continues in that series. So adeen has been very instrumental in putting together the virtual gallery. Um, we are going to speak on, um, there was an artist that we are well acquainted with who lives in Arlington, Becky Holmes Farley, who um, we had gotten to know her uh, photography, her bird photography. And we had wanted to have a show of her work at some point in the gallery. And Adine and I decided that this probably was, was a good time. So she was a huge influence um, in, in wanting to do this show. And so Adine can speak more to how the actual gallery uh, exhibit was put together. Yes, I was curious, what was the genesis of the concept? It's, it's, it's beautiful birds and it's very curious. Um, See, having watched Becky Holmes Farley's um, art over the years, as she does such a beautiful job of sort of capturing the emotion of a scene, um, uh, you know, even it's just photography, it's just photons, but the way she composes things and the way she um, uh, manipulates the photograph afterwards uh, is so wonderful. Um, she's done a wonderful job photographing birds. She's just fantastic at it, all different kinds of birds and captures the mood and the expression and the movement of the birds. And like Rebecca said, we always wanted to do a show, but we thought, why don't we use Becky as the cornerstone um, and then build from there? Because it's always wonderful to see what lots of different artists will do with the subject. Mm -hmm. and, and the exhibit is, is photography and other mediums too? It is, it's, um, we have uh, a clay sculpture, we have fiber arts, we have oil paintings, watercolors. Wow. Um, digital. A digital art, uh, assemblage, um, mixed media, collage, you name it, a wonderful variety. And, and there are a number of artists, I, as I understand. Uh, 68, over, 68, over 67 or 68. 68. It's wow. a very full, rich, uh, eclectic show. I, I wonder how, how did you go about curating it? Like what was the process and because it's pretty, it's pretty. Um, so, 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 so um, Adina and I can both speak to this, but the, the Belmont Gallery of Arts, since it's um, uh, sort of founding in 2005, we've been very a very welcoming gallery and um, our, our sort of um, unwritten mission, but part of our mission is our unspoken mission is that we try to, um, we want to encourage emerging artists as well as um, more well-established artists to be a part of our um, exhibits. So we try to include one piece per artist. Um, they can submit typically up to three pieces. And so Adeen and I, and if we have a guest curator, which we often do, we invite somebody to, to guest curate our shows along with the two of us. Um, we review many, many, many um, pieces of art, typically well over 100, sometimes 125, 135 pieces of art. And 
not only are we looking for um, a level of skill in the um, in the creation of the piece, but also with Dean and I, um, we it has to have it has to make sense in terms of having some cohesion that you know one piece next to another piece or whatever as somebody you know walks through you know visits the virtual space or when we reopen in the physical space that it makes sense mm-hmm. you know that there's some um, sort of rhyme or reason to how things were put together. And, um, you know, as I said, but we try to be as welcoming as we can with also maintaining a certain level of professionalism at the gallery. That's important because that was established early on as well. Um, and if people might not be in one show, a Dean and I will encourage them. We're going to put out another call, you know, in two or three months and we encourage you to reapply to be in that show. So I think that's one of the things that might set us apart from some other galleries, which um, are not um, always as maybe encouraging or welcoming as the BGA is, but we've always been, we we feel as though the community part is very, very important to who we are. Mm -hmm. I I often say we connect people to art and Mm -hmm. through art. And I think that's something that the artists will have acknowledged, particularly with the virtual receptions, They're, the feeling of being part of something together um, and being able to interact and share their ideas and their visions. Has this past year, I mean, of course, it has been challenging for everyone, um, but I'm curious if you wanted to share anything about the challenges that Gary might have, because you know it's, it's an in-person experience and, and you, went um, online, I believe, last, last year, uh, virtual. And has that, um, has it been, uh, people have embraced that or there are challenges? What can we as a community do to uh, make use of this wonderful resource? I mean, I, I looked at the exhibit and it was, as, as you said, Rebecca, there was cohesion and it was almost like a story unfolding of the kind of things you want to, um, to, to communicate through birds. So I'm, I'm curious if you could share that, either of you or both of you. Well, I, one aspect of being virtual versus real um, that, that, that is good is that the artist can submit art, we can put it up there and none of the art actually has to move physically anywhere. Um, so it can be a lot easier. Artists don't necessarily need to frame their pieces, sure. um, but the, it will make it difficult to uh, see the pieces together. Uh, you know, if there's a very small piece and a very large piece, you can't really tell that um, in a virtual setting. Um, it's also been a bit of a challenge to, to get the artists to get the right kind of size image and quality image to us because we want their art to look as good as possible online and you know they've already created this piece of art which looks wonderful it sort of seems mm-hmm. a little unfair it's like no 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 no. the resolution oh no no it needs to be bigger da, da, da. but we for the most part we're working out the kinks i do i also want to say a positive one positive um aspect that adine and i have have discussed is that we've actually had visitors to the exhibits from all over the world Wow. Um, because we have a guest book and we've seen that we've had, um, it's been amazing that we've had a number of visitors from Europe who have come to visit the, um, the exhibits. So that's, that's to me, that's a very big plus that typically, you know, here in, you know, in the Homer building, um, you know, we have sort of um, our own community and then maybe, you know, maybe people, depending on the exhibit, people have come throughout New England to visit the gallery. But when we get, you know, um, a note from somebody in Sweden or Germany or France that they, you know, they visited a show, that's actually very fulfilling and exciting for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you do you anticipate at some point this particular exhibit might be available if once and when things open up in person? Um, well, Adine and I are discussing what's going to happen. Um, we're pretty sure that we're going to reopen the physical space in the fall. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to, we just had a very long conversation yesterday about, um, you know, what's the future of everything. And I think as of today, we're um, of the mindset that we'll have the physical space and we'll also have some kind of a virtual space. So it's almost like a hybrid going forward because we want to keep the best of the virtual space 
you know, intact, but we also know that people do miss being able to look at the art, you know, directly in person up close to see, you know, I mean, like Adine just mentioned, I mean, people, there's, there's something, you know, about seeing the art just a few inches from you or whatever, you know, um, you can really see more directly the, the sort of the human hand at work. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you get up close, you know, to something in the space, but, you know, there's a lot that we're discussing because again, I think that this, the, also the virtual gallery has meant that artists don't have to frame their work. Um, if they sell the work, yes, then it's typically going to be framed. But so there's there's less of an expense for artists as well with the virtual space. Mm -hmm. But the bird show, Hope is the Thing with Feathers, um, that's probably not going to be in the, um, the you know, in the Homer building. Um, Adine and I are going to keep it in the virtual space. And then we're going to make an announcement what the new shows are in the fall. Mm -hmm. We'll be making that announcement maybe even next week, what we're going to be, what the calls are going to be for the fall. Um, and, and this particular exhibit, it, there's, an, oh, there's a reception next week and it's June 3rd to 7th. There's a live stream at 8.30 p.m. Did I get that right or? Um, June 3rd at um, 7 to 8.30. Mm -hmm. And um, so Adina and I will be there. A number of the artists will be there. Um, several of the artists will be um, speaking briefly about their work. And we're also going to have some um, musicians, three musicians from um, Belmont High School who have a jazz trio will also be performing. So we're very excited about, about that. Again, it's, it's about community and sort of bringing in, you know, different community partners and so on and so forth. So we're very excited that we're going to have um, the schools be a part of this exhibit as well. And do you have uh, a message for anybody who, so people who go to the, who are aware of the gallery are of course will be there, uh, but uh, in order to be more uh, inviting and making sure new members can come and join the gallery, what might be your message and who should be coming to the show who might not have come in the past? Anybody, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's welcome. Friends and family. And I think that that's one of the things that we try to do is to make art accessible mm -hmm. and to um, present it uh, from different points of view and different kinds of art. I mean, not everybody likes everything, but there'll always be something for somebody. Mm -hmm. And so should we mention how if people want to come to the exhibit, they should get in touch with the gallery because there'll be okay. a Zoom link. That's one thing, it's going to be a virtual reception and people have to have, uh, they have to join, you know, via Zoom. So- yeah. How should um, they contact you, Rebecca? What's the way- so They should just, they should contact the gallery um, at admin mm -hmm. at belmontgallery.org. Okay. And then they'll get the, um, the Zoom link. Well, this is very exciting. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure this will be an um, amazing show to look forward to. Before we go, I'm very curious if you want to do briefly talk about your backgrounds and how did you get involved in Belmont Gallery of the Arts? So I have a back, my background is um, a little bit, I guess I'll also say eclectic, but um, I have a number of years as an arts administrator. Um, I also worked in uh, film production. Um, I have a graduate degree uh, in communications and film from BU and I taught at BU for over a decade and got involved with the gallery early on, um, involved with PR and marketing efforts. And then when the first director, Nan Rogers, um, stepped down to take a job at Concord Art, um, I stepped up to the plate with Richard Hill and Richard stepped down. Um, I was director for several years, but um, Adeen was our sort of social media maven, our graphic designer, and we worked very well together. And I was extremely appreciative of her, of her skills and what she was bringing to the um, to the gallery. And I asked her if she would share the um, director title with me. And I was very pleased when she said yes, that she would serve as co-director. So we've been co-directors, I think for three years. Yeah, something yeah like I think it's three years. So, and it's worked out very well. And I'm so grateful for everything is. that she has done. Thank you, Rebecca. It's been a wonderful opportunity for me to learn and grow. Um, my background is I'm actually a scientist by training, <laughs> but I've, I've dabbled in lots of things and um, I did a lot of graphic design for the Belmont, uh, Belmont Public Library. Mm -hmm. And that, that 
kind of geared me up and got me ready for this wonderful opportunity. It's uh, Rebecca's been so encouraging um, and uh, has shared things with me so that I've been able to learn and grow and uh, meet all these wonderful artists and it's been fabulous. Great. Um, it's been wonderful to have both of you join me today. Um, so Thank anyone you. who's wanting to look for uh, human spirit and its resiliency and hope and joy and look at some gorgeous pictures, June 3rd, 7 to 8.30 is the place to be uh, and contact the gallery to get a Zoom link. Thank you so much, Rebecca and Nadine. Thank, Thank you very much. This is Shonul Malik signing off and I'll see you next time.